Hello, welcome and welcome back. This is Jacob and today we are going to be continuing the narration and character voice acting for the side story Calm Catastrophes or Wakes of Vultures. And very quickly here at the beginning, before we start, to anybody bumping into this narration through this very episode, the playlist for this whole thing is in the description of the video at the very top, so just hit it and you'll be right at the start. And speaking of previous episode, thank you very much for all the likes as always and the comments as well. They do, like I always say, they do really mean a lot and help a lot in the algorithm, so thank you very much for all those interactions. Very much appreciated. Alright, but because this is part 2, we're gonna now do the quick little recap here at the beginning of the previous part. So for those of you who want to skip, as always, the time step is provided downstairs in the comment section in the pinned comment at the top. So just hit it and you'll be right at the start of today's story. But let's proceed with on the previous part. Well then, as always, we began the beginning of every story of Ark Knights with the introduction of several characters, both the ones we know and new ones. The new ones being right at the beginning Helena aka Coldshot and the former mine worker Leon. Later we get shown our Blacksteel operators, uh, Franca leading a team of Blacksteel operators against a bandit encampment apparently, but also a rescue mission that is taking place at the same time by two other operators from Blacksteel which are Laura uh, the technician of the team, and Jessica. Laura and Jessica, however, are a bit spread out, and uh, after the rescue succeeds and the uh, missing denizen of the town of uh, David, uh, Davistown, pardon, that everybody is heading towards to, gets saved, Jessica gets a bit lost in the forest after her communicator completely breaks down. Meanwhile, the team does reconvene together with the rescued target and they proceed towards Davidstown in hopes that they will uh, run into Jessica once they get there. But Jessica in the meantime, uh, as she is walking through the forest a bit lost, does reminisce back to the briefing she received from uh, her boss Black at, uh, back at Blacksteel by the name of Clip Cliff, uh, as he tells her about the mission that she is about to head on and uh, he also hands her a little thing, a little bullet that is very, very beautifully etched. And she is supposed to give the bullet to a person by the name of Woodrow, and that she would immediately realize who it is upon seeing them. Well, Clip did not know Jessica apparently because she did not realize <laughs> uh, the person by the name of Woodrow for quite a while. But first and foremost, in the forest that she's lost, she gets, uh, she meets rather, a hunter. Or rather, he introduces himself as a hunter, or gets perceived as a hunter, however you want to put it, as he helps her out by uh, protecting her from an imminent attack by a beast in the forest. She explains the situation to him, they exchange a couple of words, and he offers to escort her to uh, Davistown. In the meantime, the team also arrives in, or rather, is on approach to Davistown, but before uh, before they reach the town, Jessica arrives first, considering the hunter knows probably a bit of a faster way to return. In the town, she gets immediately escorted by the hunter into the uh, local restaurant, the only one that is technically still working in the entire town that uh, Helena is in charge of, where she also meets Leon, who is there, and uh, upon arriving, the hunter immediately leaves. She explains to the two of them that she is also looking for someone, while she's waiting for her team now, looking for a main man by the name of Woodrow, and as she explains that, the two of them are a bit perplexed, because they tell her that the man that just left is actually the man she is looking for. As she is trying to run out after him and stop him, uh, she gets interrupted by the appearance of the rest of her team. Franca, Liskarm and Laura arrive all together uh, in the city. They reconvene and start uh, start uh, figuring out what is happening and before they can get in contact with the local government, they very quickly learn by so from the uh, people in the diner, including one person who is working for the bank of the city, that the city is actually being handled by that very same bank that uh, Sylvia, the, uh, the civilian of Davistown, is 
uh, is working at. As she offers to escort uh, Franca and Liskarm, the rest of the team stays behind. Or rather, goes their own little ways. But Franca and Liskarm go to uh, the bank to figure out what is happening. They meet the bank manager. She introduces the situation to them. Uh, the government officials that are still left there are kind of working from the garage of the bank. And uh, after that, the two of them reconvene with the rest of the team back in the diner. Back in the diner, they uh, start unraveling, or rather start deciding what to do next, as they do need to go to the uh, essentially power plant of the city to uh, power it back up before uh, before another land ship will arrive in several weeks from now, ap approximately, so that it can be uh, reactivated and towed away. Uh, as they are deciding that, the uh, the uh, former miner Leon offers to help out, as he gets also provided with a bit of a paycheck if uh, the whole thing will be done very quickly, especially if it will be done in just two weeks. He's very happy with the deal, considering that he is in a lot of debt, as we've also discovered a lot of uh, a lot of the citizens, pretty much all of the citizens are probably in some kind of debt towards the bank. But he's overjoyed with the money on offer and goes to uh, recruit another person, the former boiler worker and the very same person that was rescued at the beginning uh, by the name of Miles, uh, to help out. Also along the way, we learn, or rather we see uh, Leon's uh, youngest son by the name of Betty. They head out into the, uh, into the power plant to check on the uh, furnace of the city that was previously patched up by both Miles and uh, Leon. Uh, bit hap haphazardly, but it's it's working, you know. <laughs> Smack some duct tape on it. Uh, but the furnace is still working and Laura, who is the head technician of the team that was sent there, uh, together with the rest of the Black Steel technicians that are working under her, start to uh, spread out throughout the power plant to check out what is happening discovered that a lot of uh, the uh, machinery through the power plant is missing, as is being explained to them. A lot of, a lot of it has been used in uh, trade with caravans that pass through the area, just essentially for food. And Laura starts working on the furnace. As she quickly discovers that the furnace is kind of full of originium sediment, and is about to blow as the work has just started on it, she orders everybody to immediately leave the power plant as quickly as possible, as all hell is breaking loose throughout the power plant all of a sudden. But she and a small detachment of the team from Blacksteel stay behind to try and prevent any form of catastrophe from happening. Meanwhile, the rest of the team reconvenes back at the diner, and they are given a pretty simple order from Laura. If by an anoint in time, she will not be back or contact them about the fact that the furnace is repaired. They are to evacuate the citizens of Davistown, because if they don't do, well, Originium, you know the drill. A couple of very suspenseful and very short hours pass as they are preparing to execute a plan of evacuation, but in the last hour, Laura finally arrives, completely exhausted and very hungry back at the diner and reconvenes with the team, telling them that she has, together with uh, her black steel technician, succeeded in preventing any form of catastrophe. And that is pretty much where we left off last time. So then, let us proceed. Right then, today we will be covering the story for stages number 3, number 4 and the cutscene SD-2. No extra bits and pieces, this will be just story today. Obviously the enemy descriptions will be added as always, but we are going to be focusing today only on story and we'll see you next time if there is anything that can be extra added on top. So then, let's begin on stage number 3, titled Tricks. Sometimes issues are raised simply to prevent them from being resolved. And also before I kick start on uh, bef on the before part very quickly, there is no new enemy to add here on this stage, so there will be no break in between these two. So this will be a continuous cutscene from start to finish. You will know when the break is because 
loading screen, but we're gonna do this in one go. So let's start. You're gonna take out a loan from the bank? <laughs> Have you lost your mind? What's your plan then, Vice Guy? How do you reckon we get to three months in just a few days? This clinical trial is Tibby's last chance. I think of some other way. What other way? No way we're getting that kind of money without a loan. Uh, right, didn't we get health insurance for Tibby before? That should cover serious illness. What the hell do you think I was doing all day yesterday? I went to the bank to cash out on the insurance, but Tibby's illness wasn't covered at all. I'm begging you, please, let's not jump straight to taking out a loan, okay? Just think about your sister. She only took a small loan, but it ruined her life. Remember how much she suffered until finally... Her entire family died on their way to the frontier. So calm down and think this through. There's gotta be another way. Why do I see this stuff every damn time I come to the bank? All the more reason for us to be here, and especially for us to attend this so-called welcoming party, Franca. If we don't witness this, these things with our own eyes, we'll forever remain left in the dark. Is Fort Baron going to tow Davistown back onto its original route all by itself? This request was made directly by the regional government. The outcome will affect Black Steel's image and credibility. We'll give this mission our all. Good to hear. We appreciate it. All part of the job. Would the two of you like beer or champagne? We're out in the sticks, so you may find our selection rather unsatisfactory. All I ask is that you bear with us. Unsatisfactory? You're too humble. Take a look, Captain. This beer has no label on the bottle, but it's just as good as any niche brand from a craft brewery. The champagne's also high-end. I must say, excellent taste. It's important to keep some luxury items on hand when you're stationed in a difficult area. We do have to keep up morale, after all. Is cracking up the thermostat so high that people want to crack open an ice-cold beer also part of keeping up morale? Well, yes. As you've noted, we do have a separate backup energy supply, which includes heating and electricity. Funny how no one else seems to have this backup system. That would be due to the prescience of our first president during the early planning and development phases, an important safety consideration. The services provided by a financial institution are somewhat unique. Large amounts of money flow in and out, and be it systems or resources, it's always better to be more self-reliant. Presumably Blacksteel built their safe house here in Davistown out of the very same concerns. Isn't that right, Miss Franca? Oh. I'm fine with just a glass of water. I'll leave the beer for your employees to keep you up to keep up morale. We've sent people back to Black Steel HQ to report their repair status to Davistown's power plant. As the power has not been restored to a state where it can support navigation, HQ will naturally have to formulate a new solution. We are very appreciative of your company's contributions to our town. However, until a solution is in place, we do have one humble request. What sort of request? We were hoping you could help maintain law and order here. I'm sure you've already encountered bandits on the town's outskirts. They've caused us a substantial amount of damage. Even more troubling is the fact that um, a number of people living here are, to put it nicely, bandits themselves. To put it less nicely, they're the bandit's reserve army. We would be very grateful if you could clear them out of Davistown. Here's a list of names. Over the past few days, we've sent personnel to conduct security operations around the plate's perimeter. Based on their reports, I have little reason to believe that so many dangerous elements are operating here. There are people here with no money, yet they're unwilling to put in the work to pay back their debts. 
How can you guarantee they won't resort to more, um, desperate measures down the line? If you insist, we'll look into it. You'll look into it? Why must you verify it yourself? You can't take us at our word. If our trust is so fragile that it's broken just by double-checking the list, then it wasn't worth much to begin with. Mm. Do as you please, then. But if you really want to check things, be sure to be thorough. How did it go? Any developments on your end? Hmm. The target's already entered visual range. Seems like he's not the only one here. Is he working with someone? Seems to be someone from the plate. Woodrow, sir, is that possible? Anything's possible. The government here collapsed. Some youngins with too much time on their hands formed gangs and started making trouble all over the place. But what do they hope to accomplish by colluding with the bandits out in the barrens? Jessica, they're about to disperse. Should we arrest them? What do you think, Woodrow? Wait and see. Now's not the time. Then, um, don't do anything for now. Record where they showed up and contact me if they show up here again. Alright, no problem. One sec. Which direction did the bandits go? I'm gonna follow them and have a look. They went south southeast. Should I come with you? No, uh, I can handle this myself. Head back for now. Uh, Jessica, is that gentleman someone from the plate? Um, he's been investigating these bandits on his own, so he should be able to help us out. I, uh, I'm not sure how to break this to you, but I feel like you need a reminder. Getting cozy with the locals rarely works out well. Why? Why is that? Places like Davistown don't just go on like normal after getting reclaimed by the government. They've always got other plans on the docket, and when the time comes, the businesses, the infrastructure, even the residents will be replaced. Replaced? Then what happens to the original residents? Where do they go? I don't know how Blackstill usually handles it, but with my last employer, we were only responsible for kicking them out. What happened afterwards was none of our business. How could they not care? That's totally illegal! How could they just drive out all the locals? <sighs> There's always an excuse when it comes to places like this on the verge of bankruptcy. Like bad debts, tax investigations, security concerns. Debt. Not just me. Everyone left here is in debt. Uh, how do I put this? Well, I'll just give it to you straight. You asked about a guy who walked out into the snowfield earlier, right? It's probably because of his debts. That kind of stuff happens all the time, time here. After being forced into bankruptcy, he had no choice but to... Uh... Jessica? Hey, Jessica! What's gotten into you? I... I'm heading back first. Stubborn good for nothing father of yours starting today. Huh? What nonsense are you spewing? Let go of me. Is that a child's voice? This brat sure knows how to whine, guess he needs a gag and a good beating before he'll learn to follow us obediently. Stop right there! Let go of him! And why should I? Who the hell are you? Uh, uh, help! They're trying to kidnap me! Don't make me repeat myself. Let go of the kid! His father's in so much debt that even selling the boy off wouldn't pay it all back. So what if we kidnap him? Debt? Are you here to collect debts? Wait, don't tell me you're working for the bank! Mind your own damn business. Now get out of here! Uh, help! Someone save me! Shut your damn mouth! Last warning. Let the kid go, and don't make any rash moves. 
Otherwise, my next bullet won't just be a warning shot. Playing hardball, huh? Let's get out of here. No point in risking our lives over this damn brat. What's your name? Where do you live? I can take you back home. I'm Benny, and you can just leave me at the diner. My dad's there every night, so I can wait for him there. Is your dad Leon Theremin? Uh, how do you know? I've met him. Oh, right, those two people back there were talking about his debt. Were they debt collectors sent by the bank? Um... At first it was just collection letters, then they started sending people to our house to cause trouble, and my dad chased them out, and this time the bank probably wanted to use me to force him to pay them back. But it's clearly a crime. Who's gonna stop them? There is no police here. Can you show me your dad's bills? I might be able to help. Uh, you... Are you serious? His bills are something awful. I took a gander and uh, there ain't a whole lot more we can do for the old tower this time around. I already told you that Laura girl did a great job tidying things up and fixing what could be fixed. But you just had to come out here yourself. Just wanted to see if there's anything Black still missed that we could handle. What, you think they're gonna pay off your loans if you work overtime? I can dream, can't I? You're better off praying for gold bags to fall from the sky. I told you, your only lifeline at this point is selling off all the shares you've got in the mine. Now. I know you blew your life savings and took out loans to get those shares, but... Hell no. Then let me ask you, how much debt is that payment from Black Steel even gonna clear? I reckon it's never close to even paying off the interest. How about this then? Help me with the plant maintenance. We'll be able to keep it running off the fuel that Black Steel brought. I also happen to have a few days off. I'll pay you with the money Blacksteel gave me, and it'll buy you some time with the bank at least. No, Miles, you earned that money. Besides, how's that any different from just giving it away? Not like this, not like that. Sounds to me like you've got an excuse to say no to everything. It ain't gonna matter when you're bankrupt, and a bank's stealing the shirt off your back. There's gonna be a way. Beer, electricity, security deposit, everything looks fine, and it's within the range of what I can cover. What you can cover? Are you gonna pay off Leon's debt? If possible, yes. Dad's more afraid of owing favors than anything else. When my brother passed away, he couldn't even afford a funeral. And when people offered to lend him money, he said he didn't want to be treated like a beggar. So he ended up following Uncle Woodrow around outside. Logging, hunting, pin catching. He worked so hard those two months that when he came back, his fingers were deformed. And how much money did he make from all that? About two or three thousand. He'll never pay back his debts like that. Wait, what? He's still one of the mine's shareholders? Forget it. After the mine shut down, he's had to pay all kinds of fuel fees, vacancy fees, and land management fees just to keep his shares. And he borrows piles of money from the bank every year to do it. Th that's practically an open wound they're bleeding him dry with. Even if I came in to help him, there's no way he'd be able to pay it off. If he doesn't dump those shares, he's going to have nothing left. Not happening. Dad loves that man more than anything. He'd never dump those shares even if we both got sent to the frontier for hard labor. Benny, don't talk about your father like that. <laughs> By the way, Jessica, 
What's got that into you all of a sudden? Is something wrong? Leon's still a sharehold shareholder in the mine, so the bank's not likely to make him declare bankruptcy anytime soon. I saw someone try to kidnap Benny today to force Leon to pay off his debts. Kidnapping? They can go after Leon all they want, but to try to kidnap a teenage boy, have they no shame? Benny, you're staying with me for now. When Leon finds out his kid's missing, I'll give him a piece of my mind and ask him what the hell he's doing as a father. Uh, no, don't tell him. I don't want him to worry. We've gone way past making him worry. He needs to know damn well the consequences of what he's doing. I, I still need to go home. How can such a stubborn asshole have such a kid as sweet as you? In any case, if he's willing to sell his shares, then that combined with the tax rebates and prefer preferential policies he never noticed should be enough to cover the debt. You sure? I... I can practically guarantee it. Alright, sounds like he just needs a good reminder to stop messing around. It's finally over. So why is the main switch for the entire building located just a hundred steps from the front entrance? Is this also some great prescience from the bank's founder? That's ridiculous. It doesn't make a lick of sense. One step, two steps, three steps. There's a desk seven paces out, then make a left turn. 24, 25, 26. Oops, bumped into the lamp. 57, 58, 59. 100. Uh, ex excuse me. Can I help you? Is the bank still open? I'd like to take out the loan. Sylvia, get over here qu quick, Sylvia. I'd like to borrow some money from the bank. Can I count on you to get me a slightly better interest rate? Oh, I should never have been so mean to you. Uh, what are you doing here? Wait, you... what are you doing here? I'm sorry, you two, but we're not open for business today. Seeing the couple stare at each other in silence, Sylvia bows her head and steps away from the bank's gates. The whole way back, the thick darkness that even these streetlights do not penetrate lingers with her, caressing her neck affectionately. Since her mother passed away, she's left work the same way every day, just like this. 1,877, 1,878, and home. Mom, I'm home. She waits for a long time, but only silence greets her back. After a moment, she takes out her keys, opens the door, wipes the soles of her shoes on the doormat, and leaves the suffocating darkness in the street behind her. Convincing Leon to sell his shares. Not happening. Count me out. Why? Aren't you two friends? Sure, but we wouldn't be if I forced him to do stuff like that. We've all tried talking to him about the shares, but the stubborn bastard won't listen. Is there really no way to get through to him? Nope. In here I was thinking that if only you'd talk to him for me, then... Then what? Then I'd give you this box of chocolates as a thank you. 
chocolates, huh? The buddies here back home gave me these when I set out. Uh, said I'd have something to chew on whenever my mouth was empty, and now this is the last box. Um, I am, I'm really, really reluctant to give this away. So since you don't want to, forget it. Hmm. But did he just respond with a grunt? That's different. If you don't want to help, then um, no chocolates for you. Uh, that that came out wrong. Um. Okay, I confess, it was Helena who suggested I bring you chocolates. She said that you have a soft spot for them. So she told you to come, and here you are. My own situation is looking really bad. I have to try everything I can, no matter what it takes. Woodrow stares straight at Jessica, but she doesn't notice. She's completely lost in her embarrassment and frustration. Her head droops as she furiously wrecks her brain to figure out how to navigate this conversation faster. Sorry to keep pestering you. I'll head back for now and think of some other way myself. Just leave the chocolates on the cabinet. Uh, huh? Give me a moment to pack up and wash my face. Then we're leaving. He's agreeing to it, even though I totally blew my secret? Does he care about his image with Helena that much? Or is it the chocolates? Well, whatever. All that matters is that he agreed. The cabinet, the cabinet... Oh, is it this one? Mm, the drawers open? The objects in the old Sancta's drawer resemble him. Simple and unadorned. A belt, a holster and a pair of fingerless gloves. Jessica sets the box of chocolates down and notices a few pieces of paper pressed beneath the gloves. Eroded by time, the pages have taken on a brittle yellow complexion. Jessica knows that she shouldn't look, but can't control her urges to sneak a peek. Is this a photo of Woodrow and the boss? There's another Sancta too, and a piece of paper under the photo. It is an identification document. The black ink is hard to make out on the brown parchment, and only a few words readily stand out. Camp Colus... You're done putting away the chocolates. Oh, uh, yes, by the way, I... Uh... Then let's get going. Leon, your financial situation is in dire straits. If you drag your feet any longer, then... When the bank declares you're unable to pay, repay your debts, you'll be forced to declare bankruptcy, and by that point you won't be able to save your shares or your house. If you insist on holding onto your shares, you'll be forced to sell off your house and won't even have a roof over your head. Plenty of people have tried to talk to me into selling my shares, but you were the first to make a good case for selling my house. No, I'm not telling you to sell your house. I'm just reminding you of the consequences. If you don't mind, I can also... Um, what I mean is, I have some money I can give you to help pay off your loans, even though it's no small amount. What? Thanks, but no thanks. I don't need your charity. N no, I, I mean, I'll lend it to you. But I won't charge any interest. You can just pay it back at your leisure whenever your financial situation has improved. Look, Jessica, I'm a grown-ass man with both my hands and feet. I don't need a little girl half my age lecturing me on how to improve my life. I hope you never bring this up to me again. Wait, Leon, please, don't push me! Uh. What? You're out here sipping tea, Woodrow? It's already gone cold, just take the girl with you when you go. Aren't you going to say something, Woodrow? You agree to this! Did I? Huh? All I said was that I'd come with you, so I did. Thanks for the chocolate, Jessica. Now if you'll excuse me. You can't do this! At this rate, Leon's going to be left with nothing on to his name! So what? Or as you like, when you burn a wet piece of coal, 
All you get is a face full of ashes. How could you? You! Captain, are we seriously going to go through the entire list? How many doors have we knocked on so far? Fourteen. Other than the second household, where the middle-aged man's son did in fact run off to join the bandits, the rest were all honest people guilty of nothing more than being unable to pay off their debts. The bank couldn't dig up any dirt on them, so they resorted to using us to run them out of the town. Despicable! And this is number 15. We'll check just one more, and then... Wait, what's going on? Why are you sitting outside? My head is spinning. Hmm. Go sit outside in the cold, you crusty old fossil. The headache will go away on its own. Could he have been poisoned? Lucky we found out in time and we're both just fine. Ma'am, I thought the plate... It should have retained its basic eating functions. So why... After the bank declared us bankrupt, they shut off all the heating to our house. Without sunlight, it gets even colder inside. Why else would anyone light their fireplace? <coughs> hey, Mac Benny, what are you squatting in front of the stove for? Get up already. <coughs> the charcoal today is especially waterlogged. I've been trying to light it for a while now, but I can't get it burning at all. Just look at all the soot on your face. You think you just crawled out of the mines. Uh, hurry up and wipe it off. It ain't a big deal if you can't get it burning. Just wait until I get back. Uh, Dad, don't tell me you were in such a hurry this morning that you poured water directly into the stove. Hey, I may be stupid, but I'm not that stupid. Hand me the thongs. I'll do it. <coughs> you think I can't tell when you're lost in the sauce? Why are you blowing on it directly? Carl told me you can't light the stove, which is why he entrusted it to me before he left. Since when have you done it? What else did Carl tell you? Everything. About how you were so impatient you poured an entire pile of water into the stove to douse the flames. Not only did the coal get ruined, but the bread Helena baked became inedible. She was so mad, she chewed your ear off. When did he tell you that all that? Who do you think left me all alone back then? <laughs> left you all alone? What are you talking about? How would you even remember anything from when you were so little? All you did was sit in Woodrow's arms and tug on his beard. I don't believe you. <laughs> Who is it? Sorry, it's me. <coughs> uh, all this smoke. And the stove's completely soaked on the inside. I've been trying to ignite the charcoal for a while now, but haven't had much luck. Uh, give me a moment. No problem, I can help out too. These pieces of charcoal are completely waterlogged. Can you swap them out? This is all the charcoal we got from the caravan. Then, um, how about some firewood? We can put the broken pieces underneath to isolate the moisture, then lean any thin branches against the stove to light them on fire. Then you just need to add more firewood as necessary. Where did you learn all that? On the battlefield? But why do you ask? Aren't you a mercenary? Um... It's done. Thanks for helping Benny light the stove, but you should leave now. But I haven't even said anything yet. I just don't understand. Why are you so stubborn about it? Of course you wouldn't. Then help me understand? I'll never give up if you just keep sending me away. Hmm. 
Jessica, I was abandoned here by my birth mother when I was just four years old. It was the miners here who raised me. When I enlisted in the army, I focused on learning blasting techniques so that I'd be able to help out in the mines. As soon as I was discharged, I came back and became a mining engineer. I was involved in the renovation and expansion of the mining tunnels below town, the factory above us, and even the power plant we repaired a few days ago. The miners back then must have lived much better lives than they do now. If you told me back then what the Davis Town would become, I'd have figured you were cursing me out. True, life can be unpredictable like that. Later, I adopted my co-worker's kids, Benny and his brother, Carl. And even later, the mine kept depreciating until all I could do was keep holding onto my shares no matter what. Like hell, I let those damn stakeholders take my life's work and dump it for scraps. But there's no way the mine is ever coming back. Just stop talking. I'm serious here, if you keep holding onto your shares, the bank is going to force you to pay off your debts. Get out of my house. Please, Leon, even if you kick me out, you're going to have to come face to face with the reality. Alright, Benny, step out for a bit. You can stay at Auntie Helena's for a night. I'll come and find you after Jessica and I finish talking. Uh, wait, you can't send Benny away. Now you're trying to lecture me on how to be a parent? Yesterday... Just stop it already, Jessica. Not another word. Yesterday, some gangsters hired by the bank went after your son. Is that true, Betty? Yes. Leon's heart constricts as he looks at Benny's suit-stained face. Why... Why didn't you tell me anything? Even if I did, what good would it do? Would you march up to the bank and make a scene? What would I even solve? <laughs> After seeing his child leave, the man who had been talking so confidently a moment ago immediately hunches his back and squats down by the stove. He picks up the tongs and carefully prods at the wood. Even though the flame is already burning brightly, a puff of black smoke still comes out and sends him into a fit of coughing. <coughs> if I sell my shares in the mine, what'll I have left? At the very least, you won't leave Benny saddled with debt, and they won't take your house. First it was Carl. After Carl left, it was Benny. Ever since I took on so much debt, I've been out working from sunup to sundown, leaving the kids at home to fend for themselves. They were in charge of keeping the stove lit, and they had to handle the finances. And Benny was nearly kidnapped. In the end, I couldn't pay off my debts or protect the people I wanted to protect. I'm a right bastard through and through. Leon smacks the stove hard with the tongs, hard enough to cause sparks to fly. I'd rather die than bow down to those savages at the bank. Just the thought of that they have the gal to kidnap Benny makes me want to blow the whole damn place to bits. Leon. You said earlier that after I sell my remaining shares, I'll at least be able to leave the house for Benny. Hmm. But you sure did a number on the stove just to win me over. <coughs> you weren't kidding when you said you'd do anything. <laughs> no, I didn't pour the water in there. I wouldn't, wouldn't go that far. Wait, if it wasn't you, then who? Woodrow, what are you doing here? Woodrow doesn't answer. He simply walks right up to the stove and sets down a heavy-looking box. Don walks over and sees a box stuffed with haphazardly with charcoal pieces. Consider it an apology.
Relax, Leon. The toes of your shoes are about to tear the carpet. Relax. The murder has no place here. I prepared all the promissory documents and transfer contracts, so the bank should have nothing to say. Of course, Benny helped out a lot as well. The process shouldn't take very long, and it'll all go down smoothly. Would you like me to get you some water? I'm good. The fact that I can even stand here means I'm already mentally prepared to let it all go. I'm really sorry about this. Just leave me alone for a second. Now that I can single-handedly release them from those blood-sucking shareholders with the swipe of a pen, I need a moment to myself so I can say goodbye. Jessica. Sylvia? Uh, yes, so here's the deal. I took a sneak peek at the documents you prepared. Uh, Mr. Theremin's loan repayment is not within the scope of my job, but... There are a number of issues with your reference data. Uh, the shares are overvalued, and there are some holes that don't end up in the end. You s you're still short by a considerable amount. I'd appreciate if you could call him over for me, since there's no way I can face him. No, we're not going to put that on him right now. I'll make a check out to the bank, so you can keep it a secret for me, please? This much in one lump sum? It's not that big of a deal. Desperate times. But if Mr. Theremin found out, you know how prideful uh, he can be. Which is why this is just between us. Nobody else needs to know. Please, Sylvia. Oh, okay, then. Then, uh, can I take another look at your documents? I only have copies with me. That's good enough. Um... There are still areas that could use some adjustment. And then uh, there's the tax returns. Look, these are all uh, items that could have been written off. 30 bucks here, 75 here. There's also a rather large deduction here, a full 400. Adding everything up, it comes out to 1329. Though that's barely a fraction of the amount you have to make up for. You discovered all that just by casually thumbing through the documents? Um, this looks good enough. Then I'll directly report this and say that you filled up filled a brand new application. Finally, that should take care of the weight around, Le around Leon's neck. But he's far from the only one. I need to pick up the pace before Fort Baron arrives. Every person I help has to count for something, right? Manager, we can close Leon Theremin's case. He finally decided to sell his shares. That obstinate bastard sent us back for years. He was also extremely rude when selling them, scolding us with some rather colorful language and calling us kidnappers and so forth. But what can he do other than run his mouth? Well then, how about we pay him a direct visit next time? No need to rush. I heard someone advance the money for him, and now he is indeed debt-free. But once his shares are sold, there are plenty others circling the mine and waiting for us to swoop in. Alright, and we continue on to stage number 4, titled The Man Who Wasn't There. You should always try to raise your spirits when eating, even if it's a little difficult. I feel weird saying this, but if the heating's still chugging along and the stove's lit too, why does it feel so cold? The bank's not up to something again, are they? I hung them up all night and my socks still ain't dry. Hmm? What's that noise? How many times do I have to tell you to shave, Woody? Every time you take a sip of water, you spill droplets all over the table. What are you all about? I ain't had a drink since I came in. Then where did all these water stains come from? 
your diner is just getting old and rickety, just like my brain these days. Like, am I remembering this wrong? Or has there always been a huge water stain over there? The pipes... the water pipes ruptured? Oh my god, no way my run-down old floorboards can handle all this water damage. Go and turn off the valve, then look for something to catch the water, water leaking in. I'll take care of things upstairs. My poor waist, I can barely even stand up straight. How are things looking up there, Woody? I suggest you grab a chair and sit down before I tell you. You ain't as spry as you used to be. Spare me the theatrix and just lay it on me. I've seen it all by now. It's flooded up to my knees, and all the furniture's ruined. What about my clothes in the wardrobe? Are they okay? Your favorite color is red, right? I hope this is good news. Hmm, perfect. The water from the pipes all rust-colored, so I'm guessing all your clothes will be too. So, what the hell were you doing up there all this time? Grabbing all this. Oh, I almost forgot about this box. Where'd you find it? Where else? In the wardrobe. Not like you have anywhere else to hide stuff. I also grabbed a few things off your nightstand. Uh, at least there's no water inside. Now let's take a look. Here's the insurance policy. Should cover today's damages. Also the deed to the land and the house and my passbook. Why are you still ha hanging on to that? You know, you'll never touch none of that money. Would you throw it away if you were me? <laughs> See, you get what I'm talking about, don't you? What he saved up all these years wasn't just the money, it was his conviction too. Sentimental old fool. We're all old fools here, Woody. Compared to the fickle future and the pieces of the past we've built up or the years hit that much closer to home. Says you. Look, it's the novel that was sitting on the nightstand too. Ain't been open for the longest time. The same old cliched love story about a rich girl and some farmer. Why you gotta be so grumpy? Ain't got nothing nice to say. I've got plenty. Like, good luck at the bank tomorrow. You should thank your lucky stars that have mellowed with age. So, what about you? Any plans for tomorrow? I'm gonna bring Jessica along to have a talk with someone. A talk? Yep, just your normal talk. Put the gun down, yeah? If you've got something to say, old man, I'm listening. What are you so scared of? If you ask me, I'm as gentle as they come. So, you wanna chat? Let's chat. You and the bandits out there have been meeting up in secret these last few days. How about you share what you talked about? Uh, let go of me, old man. I said... I said... You spineless wimp. I... Give him a good kick, Jessica. Um, uh, okay. What are you doing? Wiping your shoes on my pants? Forget it, Jessica. How's your aim? Not too bad, I think. Perfect. Can you thread a bullet right between his ears? Sorry, sir, my hand is still a bit shaky, but it's not like I hit you with that last one, so you can stop screaming. It's fine. You'll get it after a few tries. Oh, all right. It, it, it was... It was what? It was because they've been short of manpower these days, so they're trying to recruit us. I figured seeing how none of us on the plate can repay our debts anyway might... This will give some folks a chance to dig themselves out. You're talking about converting people to a life of banditry? 
It's not like I forced them or anything. They were ready to jump ship before I even finished talking. Come on, like I said, what are you fellas so afraid of? Just tell me the truth. Uh, says the man waving a gun in my face. What if we say something that pisses you off? Where are those bandits hiding now? Uh, how would I know? They're so damn slippery. <laughs> That's enough, Jessica. Uh, just let go already, old man. You can take anything you want from this room, please. Color me surprised. These punks actually have some pretty nice stuff. You've got some bottles of beer and champagne in the corner. Did we seriously just let them walk away scot-free? All I care about is finding those missing people. If these punks wanna leave the plate, that's their call. I ain't gonna judge them for it. But I think... Mm, want something to drink? I think I'll pass. Mm. Mellow, full-bodied fragrance of hops and a refreshing aftertaste. Where the hell did they get such quality booze? Hmm. My sincerest apologies, Helena ma'am. After a preliminary review and discussion, we cannot accept your compensation application. The damage to the water pipes in your incident photos is clearly man-made. Man-made? Wait, you mean someone's messing with us again? Considering your restaurant's revenue and liabilities, we have ample reason to believe that you deliberately damage your own water system to cash out on the insurance plan. You think this is insurance fraud? No, ma'am, we are simply saying it's a reasonable conclusion to make. As long as you can provide professional proof that eliminates that possibility, we'll be able to move on to the claims process. How the hell am I supposed to find a judge or a lawyer on this damn plate? It's been ages since they all left. My apologies, but we are simply following procedure. If that's all, then I'd like to assist the next customer. There's a long line behind you. Then, withdraw the money from this passbook. This passbook? Yes, this jogs my memory. You've already applied several times before, but can you prove that you came by this source of income legally? He sent me this passbook along with a letter. By the time I arrived in Davistown, he'd already passed away. All his neighbors can attest to that. Do you really expect that to hold up, legally speaking? Just give me back my stuff. I'm leaving. All your belongings are right here. Remember to take them with you, ma'am. Also, may I offer you a little reminder? What is it? Based on the photos you provided, we can only guarantee one thing. The flooding to your restaurant has significantly reduced its value, meaning it is no longer enough to offset your existing debts. If you don't want to enter the compulsory liquidation process, I recommend you consider the following... I've heard enough! Just keep your trap shut, bastard! Helena? Looks like she didn't notice us. Why are there so many people here today? What's the bank up to? This is the collection notice I received earlier this morning. It says that I'm insolvent and will be declared bankrupt soon, but I've been making my payments. Ma'am, we've been extending your loan term for so long, but we're no longer able to grant you leniency. The good news is that after liquidating your existing assets, your remaining balance will be only 2,000 gold certificates, which I'm sure you'll have no trouble procuring. Please, can you extend it just another two months? No, one month is enough. Unfortunately, no. We can't push it back even a single day. If you're unable to make your payment, we'll have no choice but to begin the compulsory process. Well, your property will be confiscated and you'll have to leave Davistown within the time allotted, while continuing to pay your debt of roughly 10,000 certs. Of course, failure to do so will result in criminal liability. But I can't afford that, whether it's two or ten thousand. Please, I beg you, just one more month's grace. If you truly have no other options, then please take a look at this. 
the Pioneer Plan. If you apply now, you'll be able to enjoy a certain amount of loan forgiveness. But I'm already so old. Even if I went out to the frontier, what could I possibly do? Are you in any po pos position to worry about that? Will you continue to carry your debt at the risk of criminal liability and lose the roof over your head? Or would you rather shed some of your debt and start a new life on the frontier? Do you really need to hear my opinion? Hmm. I'll sign it. Excellent. Please, head to your right. My colleagues there will help you get signed up. Next customer! What? What the hell is this? If you two are here to discuss business, please get in line. Oh, oh if it isn't Miss Liskar and Miss Franca. How are you doing? Have you finished looking over the list? You've got some explaining to do. Why are you forcing people out into the barrens? By signing the agreement, they can shed a lot of their existing debt and start over without that weight on their backs. Isn't that the best possible outcome? And what about the list? How are any of these people supposed to be bandits? They're just a bunch of destitute old folks who don't want to be run out of their homes. Once they go bankrupt, their houses no longer belong to them, but rather to us, the creditors. What else would you call it when someone takes advantage of the lack of police, police to squat on someone else's property? Is that not a crime? So, your so-called law and order is just driving out poor people who can't pay up? There's nothing so-called about it. This is law and order, Miss Franca. Insurance fraud? They're declaring you bankrupt? That's why I didn't want to talk about it. I feel like I'm gonna pop a blood vessel. If the bank is purposely depreciating the value of the diner, how much are they slashing it by? I've been going back and forth with them for a while now, but seems like they're settling at 50,000 certs. If it's only 50,000, I can lend you the rest. Just like you secretly lent money to Leon. Sylvia told you? It's been eating her up inside, so she told me this morning. Don't worry though, I can keep a secret. <laughs> if you want to lend me money, of course I'd accept, accept it. But who knows how long it'll take to pay it back, if ever. I don't mind, even if you never pay it back. No, stop it. Don't say things like that. I'll definitely find a way to return the favor someday. Here, when the bank comes to collect, give them this check. Sorry. <sighs> and why are you apologizing? It ain't like you're the one borrowing money. By the way, one other thing. Leon was too embarrassed to tell you himself, but he wanted me to pass this on. He found out about the money? You silly girl, I told you your secret's safe with me. Why would I tell him? He just wants to treat you to a meal. Seems like bandits ain't the only thing Woodrow's been tracking. He's got a good catch of foul beasts. Miles and many will be there too. Oh, okay then. You don't sound too happy about it. That's because... Actually, I saw a lot of people outside the bank on my way here. They were signing agreements to head out to the frontier. I asked around and it seems like it's a way of shedding some of their debt. But why do they have to abandon everything and risk their lives to start over in a place with nothing? Just for a little bit of debt relief? Can they... Can they survive that ordeal? And last but not least, the main course. Garlic crusted fowl beast with roast potatoes. Wow, that smells amazing! I love this piece. Put it down, Woody. That's for Jessica. You heard her. She's the star of tonight's feast. It's no big deal. I just saw what was going on in Davistown and felt that I couldn't sit back and watch. As for the food, I'm fine with whatever, really. 
I even had some biscuits earlier, so I'm not ha that hungry. See, she's fun, that. No means no. Benny, this one's for you. Uh, oh, wow. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> What's so funny? Nothing. <laughs> it just occurred to me how different you seem compared to when we first met. Yeah, he's been like that for ages. When he first strolled in town, he immediately pissed off pretty much everyone in the mines. We all thought that this grumpy, sharp-tongued asshole was here to cause trouble. And what happened after that? Then he met Helena. He really should be thanking her. If it weren't for her warmth and willingness to put in a few good words for him, those unlikable fellas. But chat a bit today and you'll find common ground tomorrow. In the end, she discovered his more uh, charming side and showed it off to the others. <laughs> there was even a song going around at the time, probably written by one of her admirers. Still remember how it goes, Miles? Oh yeah, I almost forgot. Right, there was that song. I think it's coming back to me. It was the intro, and let's sing it together. Who gave you Jerk's permission to sing in my restaurant? I wonder here alone, not a penny to my name. My hometown far behind me, miles and miles away. The parents stretch before me, as far as I can see. And who's waiting at the end? Who indeed but she? She spread her arms, spread her heart, showed me that pretty face. And from that moment on, I found my dreams in her embrace. Is this song about Helena? Who else? If you ask me, the her it mentions might not be a specific person, but rather a broader idea. What sort of idea? Maybe this she is a home filled with everyone's dreams, Davis Town itself. Hey, that makes sense. Think about it. The second verse talks about her body, right? That's the energy tower. Her hair is the white smoke coming from it, and her burning heart must be the plant's furnace. And in that section you fellas just sang with her arms and her embrace, ain't that just like those two long railroad tracks embracing everyone here? So many pioneers carved out this piece of land bit by bit with the tools in their hands. It became the place they started their families and businesses in. And after that, even more youngsters arrived with their dreams and aspirations, following the footsteps of the previous generation and pitching in their youth and passion. She and only she is worthy of everyone's admiration. I knew it. I knew it! It all makes sense now. Anyhow, no way in hell anybody's pining all their hopes and dreams on my body. The engineer has nothing more to say. His eyelids droop and his head tilts back slightly. The restaurant owner's words whisking him back to the past. He remembers the soothsaying faces of his co-workers when they went home after a long shift. He remembers how his neighbors would greet him in the morning when he left for work. He remembers the cool and refreshing beer foam escaping from the rim of his glasses and the warmth on his cheeks from the children's kisses. His thoughts are wild and turbulent, but they fill his heart with warmth and comfort. Just like the song he is humming right now, completely tuneless, yet moving nevertheless. And who's waiting at the end, who indeed but she? She spread her arms, spread her heart, show me that pretty face. And from that moment on, I found my dreams in her embrace. The others in the room stop what they are doing and make no other sounds. Only the engineer's voice is allowed to fill the entire restaurant. After a while, the boiler worker's coarse voice joins the song, and the restaurant owner begins to hum along softly. 
Even Woodrow, whose attention had been seized by the food on his plate, cannot help but tap his fingertips against his knees to this beat. Only Jessica feels gripped by an inexplicable unease, as if there is a dark shadow in her heart that will not go away. Alright, and before we continue, we have two new enemies here to add on this stage. Number one would be the Paramilitary Thief, a gangster hired to sow chaos, more interested in stealing property than injuring others. The thermal amplification devices they are equipped with have not actually been tested for safety. Lovely. The other one, Paramilitary Sniper, an outlaw hired to sow chaos, equipped with a thermal energy blaster with its output cranked up to high. However, as a result of this, they are, they are able to charge the equipment of other gangsters. Also lovely. Anyway, we continue with the after part. He spread her arms, spread her heart, show me that pretty face. And from that moment on, I fought my dreams in her embrace. I still remember when you fellas got together to sing that back in the day. Your voices lit up the entire room, felt like your singing cleared up the winter fog that year. Always the same song as just now, ma'am? <laughs> Hardly. They knew all sorts of songs. The miners came from all over, bringing so many songs in so many languages. Um, does Woodrow also know how to sing? He ain't much of a talker. Whenever we all get together, he just stops his face. Like now. <coughs> Hello, now. When are you gonna crack open that bottle of champagne I brought back? Shoot, I really am getting old, huh? Nearly forgot. Um, about Miles, he... Don't worry about him. Said he wanted you to take a stroll, so you did. <laughs> Just pop the cork and pour him a glass. We can toast when he comes back. Alright, without further ado. The cork shoots out with a pop, golden vine and silver foam splashing out at the same time. The sweet aroma spreads across the room, and wondrous befuddlement sparkles in the eyes of everyone at the table. Here, Jessica, you're the star tonight, so the first glass is for you. Thank you. Next up is you, Buddy. Thanks for helping her talk some sense into that stubborn old burden beast. Don't mention it. This one's for Miles, this one's for me, and last and definitely least is you, Leon. For killing us with worry all this time. Okay, I deserve that. To be perfectly honest, I actually am. If you got something to say, better wait for Miles. You ain't gonna leave him out like that, are you? Ah, uh, yeah, makes sense. The table that had been lively all evening falls quiet, and the spilled champagne seeps silently into dark, unseen places. Past bowels and plates. Uh, excuse me. What is it, Benny? Past cups and saucers. Actually, there's something I wanted to announce to everyone. I was wondering why you were so quiet today, but I guess you had something brewing. Waiting to snatch the spotlight from your dad at the dinner table. Benny, why don't you wait for Miles, too? Past empty wine bottles. No, I think now's the best time. I, uh... Until it flows over the table's edge and seeps into the floor. Snap. I'm leaving. <laughs> As you finally got sick of us noisy old farts, can you wait for Miles to get back so we can share one last ring before we say goodbye? Uh, no, I meant I'm leaving Davistown. Look at this kid, getting drunk without touching a drip of champagne. No, I'm perfectly sober. 
It's something I've been meaning to get off my chest, but I never get the chance, so I'm saying it now. What's wrong? Why does everyone look like it just started raining? M Miles, I... Benny just said that he wants to leave Davistown. Uh, wh what? How long have you been thinking about this boy? Uh, about a year or so. Last month, Miss Selena from next door came over and said that her daughter in Ironford City managed to find a caravan willing to come through here. She said she was planning to go with it to follow her daughter. She asked if I wanted to come. She thought it'd be a waste of my talents to stay. No matter how much I learn here, I wouldn't have a place to use any of it. She told me uh, she didn't want me to become the next Sylvia. What about your living expenses, tuition? Where are you gonna live? Don't worry, there are plenty of boarding schools in Ironford City willing to provide scholarships so I can study there. Benny, why wait so long to discuss this with us? It's a big decision. You know better than that. I'm sorry, Miles. You ain't asking for our input. You're just letting us know the decisions he's made. Have you thought this through? Weighted the pros and cons? Who knows, this place place might perk up once it gets moving again. You can always decide then. I don't want to wait that long. The only reason you're all willing to stay put and pray things get better is because you remember the good old days. But I don't. This place has been a dump for as long as I can remember. My adoptive father worked so hard for this place, throwing away everything else without hesitation. My brother took his place as a pillar of the family and wanted to join a mercenary group when he came of age to earn money to send back home. But a few years later, those people sent his belongings back with no explanation in the attached letter, except a few lines saying they're sorry. There should have been another path for him back then, but just like there should be one for me now. Uh, am I wrong? So when are you leaving? Tomorrow. I know I shouldn't have waited this long to tell you, but if I don't say it now, I'll never get a chance. Boeing glances across the table at his father, mustering the courage to look him in the eyes. He desperately hopes to see anger and resentment. That would make him feel a little less guilty, a little less conflicted. But his father simply hangs his head and remains silent, completely at a loss for words. Leon. It's fine. It'll be alright. It's not a bad idea. You should leave. You deserve it. Elena gives Leon a few pats on the shoulder, but he simply continues to mechanically repeat a few words of approval, prompting her to shake him a bit harder. It's fine, Elena. I'll be alright. This is how it should be. Then I wish you a safe journey. Take care of yourself, kid. Flashback. <sighs> Why is it so damn cold here? I picked up some wood we can burn. Feel any better yet? Judging from how you curl up in a ball, I'm guessing you've never been through anything like this. Ah, uh, how could your folks think you'd make it as a mercenary? Huh? You decided on it yourself? But why? Did you get in a fight with your family? Oh, there are people you want to protect and problems you want to solve, huh? Hmm, sounds pretty ambitious if you ask me. I'm a bit jealous, to be honest. Most people you see out here in, the, in these ruins on the battlefield were 
pushed here by circumstance, myself included. Driven by poverty, by injustice, by darkness and violence. We often pick up our weapons and rashly open fire, without worrying about what we are aiming at. Right up until we finally step in a puddle of mud and look down at our footprints, only to realize that what we just stepped in was a river of blood. When that happens, I'm sure there's some noble ideal that can keep you from collapsing in defeat. Too bad I never found out what it was. I was only in it for the, for the money. My family owes a lot of money, and my little brother, well, he's damn smart. If he'd been born rich, he'd be at least top of his class. But if he stays back home, the only future he's got is a, is a debt collector. I, I don't think that counts as being in it only for the money. You're doing it for your family, that's, that's noble too. Eh, who can say? But for now, at least. We're doing it just to survive. The attack's about to begin. Back to present? Stop drinking already, Leon. Can I sleep at the diner tonight? If you want. Poor fella, just look at him. It's just like seven years ago. What, you guys gonna talk about Carl now? Don't mind me, no need to tiptoe around it. This is already the second time. The second time. Twice now. So why are you avoiding me? You think you think you think I can't handle it? Thank you for bringing me here, Jessica. You can head back now. I still don't feel very good about this. I don't think your boss would be happy with how you're always fretting over us. I just can't bear to stand on these sidelines when there's something I can do. Still, you helped Dad keep the house, so thanks again. But the reason he finally sold his shares was because of you. I know. He had to give up what was most precious to him just to keep a roof over my head. But with me gone, he'll finally be free to do what he really wants. In that sense, the house was never the obstacle. It was me and my brother. Do you remember my brother? You're talking about Carl? I've heard you and Helena mention him before. Yeah, we know him as Carl, but over at Blacksteel he went by a code name, Blackblade. Black plate? It's water under the bridge, Leon. Why dredge it up now? No point trying to stop him, Miles. Just let him talk. He never brought it up, so we didn't say nothing. But now that he wants to look back, it's our job to let him. I suppose. I didn't ask for these thoughts, but in the dead of night, do I really have any control over what pops into my head? The more I dwelled on it, the more painful it was. The more painful it was, the less it made sense. But Benny figured that out a long time ago. He was right. Every step Carl took was never really his own choice. Because I was too stubborn, too arrogant. Ended up running everything dry. Our money, our lives, and our choices. When I was little, there was a miner who'd always complain how nothing was easy anymore when you're middle-aged. You run out of energy and can only focus on a few things at a time. So you gotta be smart, you gotta keep your eyes on what really matters. Stop being greedy. But when it was my turn to grow old, I just refused to accept it. I grabbed the wrong end of the rope and held on to for dear life. I told myself I was a brave warrior, fighting the good fight against fate itself. And what do I have to show for it? Put my way into a mountain of debt! What for a day without all its last legs? 
But for my eldest to die on the battlefield, my second son saw right through me, so why wouldn't he run all the hell away? Lord, we all know how much the mine means to you. And tell me, how much? Because I haven't a damn clue at this point. All I know is that I should have held onto those little hands back then. The hands of my children. I was a damn fool. I could have not see the writing on the walls when I heard that complaint. I should have etched those words into my mind. My dad might be an old fool with the memory of a thief, but I'm not. I recognized you the moment I saw you, the emblem on your uniform and your gear. It's the exact same one I saw on the back with Carl's personal effects. He... he was your brother. I never realized. Did he never tell you his real name? Or did you simply forget all about him? I remember him. I didn't work with him for very long. But how could I forget? You actually worked with Carl? In Chernobog, we were left together to scout out the strength of the enemies hidden in the ruins. I was there when he was injured. I, I was so flustered at the time. My mind went completely blank. I... Uh, you were there when he died. Yes, I was. But you still didn't know his real name. Actually... Actually, the time I spent with him was very short. Actually, I was so scared back then, I barely remember a thing. Actually, mercenaries always keep a few secrets close to their hearts that they don't readily disclose to others. Actually, there is no actually at all. Jessica knows this very well. I'm sorry. It's alright. That wasn't the point I was trying to make. What I want to know is, have you ever seen a silver ring inlaid with diamonds? It belonged to his biological mother, and he always carried it with him, but it wasn't in the bag sent back by your company. If you watched him die, then surely you know what happened to it. Were you the one who took it? If so, give me back my brother's things. Uh, no, I haven't... I have no idea. I've never seen him with a ring like that. Maybe it got lost. How could Carl possibly lose that ring? Finally done with the last one. Let's take a look. Oh, oh number 120! With just a few strokes of the pen, 120 people have been sent to the frontier. Well, you better keep that pen moving or you'll be next. Sylvia, mind getting the lights? I'm going to go lie down for a sec. Hundred and twenty people. <laughs> Sylvia's stress and anxiety make her habitually reach up to fumble around her collar. As soon as she feels the familiar ring resting atop her chest, she hastily gives it a squeeze. The ring's unyielding texture digs into, into her palm, yet gradually calms her down as well. Just like that embrace seven years ago. It was so tight she couldn't breathe, yet it eventually placated her surging tears. Carl, what should I do? What else is there for me to do? Since you don't know where it is, head back, Jessica. Thanks for sending me off. Honestly, I'm grateful that you convinced Dad to choose the house. Now, even if I decide to leave, he won't be left with nothing. At the end of the day, those shares did nothing but make him feel a bit better. Not a damn thing. If, if he ultimately wasn't able to keep the house, would you still have chosen to leave? I don't know. I don't want to be an obstinate fool, but I don't want to be an ingrate either. Alright, this is goodbye for real, Jessica.
Why are you still following me? What do you hope to accomplish? What can you even do at this point? I'm not sure myself. All I know is, I don't think you should leave like this. Please go back already. I'm begging you. You're holding a golden nail in your hand. It ex it's extremely valuable, but please don't use it to repair paper houses. In the end, no matter how hard you work at it, all you'll be left with are a few extra holes. Paper th that thin will crumble under its weight anyway. <sighs> go back to where you belong. The house swatted in silver and gold. Find a place where you can drive that nail in. That's where it truly belongs. <laughs> so please, just stop following me, alright? <laughs> Has Benny gone back yet? Yes, Woodrow. I saw him home. Then why aren't you heading back too? I won't be able to fall asleep even if I do. I wanted a little bit of time to myself. What the hell did that brat say to you? Just something very reasonable. It reminded me of... Oh? It reminded me of a few things. A few things I should have already known. Ever since I was little, helping others was like grabbing a little yellow toy fowl beast in a crystal clear bathtub. All I had to do was extend my hand, and I'd be able to prevent the tub from spilling over. But that's because the faucet built with the wealth and authority bestowed to me only dispensed the warmest, clearest water. That's why everything around me always looked so pristine. But as soon as I stepped out from that bathtub, from my family circle, I came face to face with reality. Reality is a murky quagmire. When you reach in, you have no idea what you'll pull out or what you'll touch. There is no reason for you to agonize over this. To be blunt, nothing you did meant a damn thing to Benny's final decision. I watched that kid grow up. He's been full of good ideas since he was little. Great ideas. He, uh... He really takes after someone I once knew. When he sorts things out in his head and makes up his mind, he'll set off in a straight line and never look back. He'll clear a path forward, but no way back. Sounds like an extremely determined person. Almost irrationally so. Hardly. He was the most rational person I know, the source of all our problems, as well as the solutions can only be found on the road ahead of us. I... I'm a bit jealous of people like that. Being that perceptive at a young age must save you a lot of unnecessary detours. Don't ever envy people for that, Jessica. Why do you say that? Because they'll end up bald, not a single strand of hair. Thanks for the reassurance. Alright, and let's finish off today's part with SD-2, titled Sudden Impact. Go on, make your day even more exciting. Two weeks later. Hey, teacher's pet. We've been waiting here for nearly a whole day already. You saw the news that the messenger brought us from HQ, didn't you? They said the ETA is tomorrow afternoon. And also that we needed to spend the day before preparing everything needed for the connection. The Davistown connectors were working fine to start with. Laura got it all up and running in half a day. And now we're just standing around with our thumbs up our butts. If you're cold, you're free to use the tent we send up, or warm yourself by the fire. What if I'm not cold? What if I'm afraid? Of what? I don't know. I just really can't tell how this whole thing will go down. 
Liskarn brings her communicator to her ear, looking slightly impatient. It's not receiving any signal. This proves that Ford Baron, known to Blacksteel operators as the Landship, has yet to enter transmission range. Not going to warm yourself up a little longer, Jessica? I'll pass. It's almost dark. I'll feel cold regardless. You shouldn't worry too much. I mean, yeah, I'm real mad about the bank too. But the landship is almost here. The boss isn't about to let those bankers bastards make a fool of us. Boss? Which boss? Mr. Cliff, of course. Who else? He... It's hard to say. I mean, in the end, he's a businessman. Jessica silently looks in the direction of the platform. Instinctively, she reaches into her pouch and rubs the bullet inside. Hmm? Look over there! Is that a fire? Where? Right on the plate, close to the mining district. Maybe they started a fire by accident while heating themselves up? Hold on, no, there's not just one. What is this? Jessica? Team Blacksteel. Ship estimated to arrive in. Acknowledged. Jessica, let everybody know. Captain, there are multiple district fires on the plate. I don't know what's going on, but I have to go check. Why now of all times? But we've already got the signal from the land ship. Fort Baron shouldn't be far. Jessica? Jessica, where are you going? Captain, what do we do? Let her go. We'll continue the connection mission. Hmm. What's with all the ruckus at this hour? Hmm. Where is that noise coming from? Someone's pounding the plant! Hmm. Woodrow grabs his firearm from under his pillow and listens closely to the commotion downstairs. Hurry up and get down here, buddy! Someone's broken in! Awful. Ugh. If I'd known, I wouldn't have drank so much. I'm so tired. Maybe I'll just lie down here. That way, I'll freeze to death on the street by tomorrow for sure. <sighs> What's that noise? What's going on? What the hell is this? Run! Those people just burst in and started smashing and looting! Who are they? Huh, so it's you, Gramps. You're the one from the snowfield. I'm a pretty lucky guy, Gramps. Shh, don't make a fuss. You'll attract others. You were real lucky too, getting away from me, but I wonder how long that luck will last. Run! You can't take him on! So, you're here too, old-timer. Good, saves us the trouble of looking for you. What's going on, Helena? I figured you'd have knocked them all off by the time I got downstairs. They've gotten a lot more reckless. They've really gone nuts. Hey now, no whispering. If you've got something nice to say, you can share it with the class. You ignorant brat. Those bullets must be real pricey, yeah? So expensive, you don't even have all six rounds loaded. What are you getting at? Makes sense. There ain't a whole lot of materials you can use on this plate. I mean, if it weren't for that, how come you've been packing that piece every day for all these years and I ain't never heard about nobody getting shot? 
My friends, these two bastards are well past their expiration date. Put them out of their misery, then help yourselves do whatever you find. What are you people doing? Out of the way, booze hound. Who, who gave me the right to, to make trouble here? Here, let me treat you to another bottle and I get some sleep. Heh, <laughs> nice one. That is, he live with a drink in his face. <laughs> That's about everything there is to grab. Head to the next shop. How are you okay, Leon? Let me help you up. <sighs> Those brats can't be so cruel. Her face so bloody. I'm okay, just a little dizzy. Look at how they smashed the place up. It wasn't just the vin display windows. Forget the windows. They've cleaned out the whole store. What the hell is going on tonight? We're short on time here, Graham. Squid it with the hide and seek. You're here, aren't you? Not a pain. This place is so cluttered. No room to move at all. Get out here already, you old bastard! Mm. Huh. Surprised you could dodge that with your leg. Guess I didn't give you enough credit. Let's see how long your luck's gonna hold out. Huh, got you. Honestly, you're lucky to die in this stinking place. Suits you just perfectly. <sighs> just a little more. Hang in there, old bones. It'll work. It'll definitely work. Now I can finally say goodbye to you, old fart. Not so fast. It's over for you punks! What's this, steam? Ugh, it burnt! You're right though, this stinking place is my home, so of course it's a great fit for me! <sighs> no one makes trouble in my house! Eh. You asked for this. You're right, it's not fully loaded, and it took quite a bit of trouble to get these to fire in my gun. Which is why I ain't wasting any on you, it's not worth it. The old man holsters his gun and removes his cufflinks. He then rolls back his sleeves to reveal his arms. Really, Woody? At your age? When's the last time you saw me use my whip? When you sold those stock beasts to the caravan for supplies outside the plate, so three or four years ago. Right, only three or four years ago. I'll take care of their leaders. Can you take care of the rest? Sure thing, leave it to me. Make it quick, there's still time before dawn. Maybe we can catch some beauty sleep. Too bad there ain't any trees around to hang you from. I could try it from the roof, though. What's wrong? You got us surrounded, but none of you have the balls to lead the charge. Don't get cocky, old bastard. This show's just getting started. What's the bird on the street? What's going on tonight? These are all the bandages I've left. It's not enough to wrap your head, but press them against the wound. Mouth stop the bleed. I'm fine, just tell me what you know. At first I heard some things from the east side on the plate. You know where all those thugs gather. They say lots of folks in town think that since we ain't ever gonna pay the banks back, they might as well... Uh, might as well what? Might as well rob everyone, then flee to the frontier for a fresh start. You saw it, it's like they all went crazy. They're beating people up, smashing up stores, stealing everything. Wait, Leon, look! That's, that's the direction of your home! 
Damn it! Manager, I, I heard the situation outside is pretty bad. Calm down, Sylvia. We're all safe here inside the bank. There are a despicable bunch beyond redemption, but before us and only us, they're perfect gentlemen. If you're afraid, get some sleep. By the time you wake up, you'll never see them again. Uh, what do you mean? Has no one told you? Our business partner will be here soon. Before you know it, those men will be useless to us. Which is why, when they suggested they'd leave town with some uh, souvenirs, we had no reason not to go along with it. All we have to do is wait patiently, like we've done so many times. Hold tight, and everything will be as it should be. Uh, manager, I just got a transmission from Blacksteel. Their landship is arriving sooner than expected. Not only are they here, they're here sooner than we thought. But it's all the same to us. Looks like you didn't learn your lesson. Shit. Every damn time it's either a lesson or a warning. You ever going to fight for real? Ah, my head! Ah! If you're that eager to eat a bullet, I could oblige. Left foot or left hand? Pick one. You have no idea, you can chase us off today, but there's more where we came from. Not one of you is ever gonna get away. I'd worry about myself first if I were you. <laughs> What's that noise? Fire! Help! Ma'am, is Leon still inside? I don't know. When I came out, the house was already on fire. Please make way, ma'am. What are you doing, girl? You can't go inside. The fire is too strong. You won't make it back out. Ma'am, please... Go find more people to help fight the fire. I'll go inside to look for Leon. Who is he to you anyway? Why put your life on the line to save him? An acquaintance. Now please let me go. That's it? Not even a friend? Don't do this. I'm... Jessica, why are you here? What are you doing? Leon? So you weren't inside. I saw it, Jessica. I saw it. Leon, she said she was gonna run into the fire looking for you. I, I thought you were... Don't cry, my girl. I'm doing just fine. But your house... It doesn't matter. It's okay. I can sleep over at Elena's. I think no one else lives here. I had nothing but empty walls to look at anyway. I was suffocating. It's not so bad it got burned down. Now, there is nothing to dwell on anymore. What's that noise? What do I do? What do I do? What do you do? I told you, it's burnt down. Let it stay that way. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? No, what do you mean, what do I do? What's wrong? Dilla, I see you going in and out of Mr. Cliff's office. Did the Scarm Squad screw this up? No, there is an emergency situation on the plate, but they've completed their mission. The landship will connect to Davistown very soon. Got it. All those debtors will know better than to hang around once we're there, so... Watch what you say. D sorry, my bad. But what, what, does, what did the boss say about it? Don't tell me he had a change of heart just because people are making trouble. Everyone needs to proceed according to plan. Alright. Uh, at last, looks like we're almost there. First, there was a strange gust causing everyone's hair to flutter. Next, there was the rumble they felt beneath their feet. Finally, there was a loud boom in the sky, hundreds of yards away. Mm -hmm. 
Breaking through the dense fog of the winter night, Fort Baron has finally arrived after its two-week journey. Everyone is gathered on the streets or standing by the windows, watching it intently. Whether they welcome it or reject it, it arrives. Whether this has been a nightmare or a pleasant dream, they are all jolted awake. Woodrow weighs the gun in his hand. He is not very pleased at being interrupted. He looks away from the vessel in the distance to find that the man on the ground has scurried away, leaving only a long, bloody trail. Huh. <laughs> Should have shot his foot when I had the chance. God damn it. Alright, and that will be where we leave off for today. I know today is gonna be a bit of a cliffhanger, <laughs> considering what just happened and what just arrived, but... Backdrop change! Anyway, we will continue next time. Uh, one quick thing. Uh, <laughs> I usually leave in these videos uh, the pickup for the, you know, the free unit that comes with uh, these side stories. However, I made a little boo-boo and uh, I accidentally accepted her because I thought she's gonna be on stage 5. I wasn't looking, I literally just hit collect all and, uh, well, acquired her. So, it's not gonna be in any of the videos. <laughs> I, I don't know. Usually it's around stage 5, so I thought it's gonna be stage 5, whatever. It's my little thing that I like to leave in these videos, but anyway. Like I said, this will be it for today. Uh, I wanted to include one more extra part, like one more extra stage. Uh, pure my own curiosity, but let's put let's put it this way. So far, in every story where I did a character that has like a bit of a dry, raspy voice, in this case, Leon, I kind of start to regret it after a while because I kind of somehow always manage it to give to people that have to deliver a performance. And let's put it this way, this one wrecked me, uh, vocally. So I need a bit of a break. <laughs> Until I start recording the next part. Uh, not too long, obviously, you just need the usual one day in between. <laughs> just need a break. God, but what a part as well today, Jesus. Brrr. Anyway, took, took a bit. But yeah, thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, uh, please consider leaving a like on it. it, would help me out a lot, like I said at the beginning of the video. Uh, if you're new to the channel, consider leaving a... consider subscribing, and uh, check out the rest of uh, the playlists that are here. Pretty much everything that is Arknight's side story, main story, is on the channel, outside of one single side story at this point, but soon, TM. And, of course, there are also memberships on the channel. If you want to join the membership, it is very, very cheap. And, uh, like I always say, there will be no videos behind a membership or anything like that. It is just purely there to support me and my work more directly. So, thank you very much. Thank you, obviously, to the members that are already there. And, uh, as always, I hope you have a fantastic day wherever you are. And I will see you in the next part. Until then, bye-bye.